Welcome to the modern classic surface area and volume of cylinders, also known as sweet cylinder soda. Here we have a uh, exact medically correct replica of a can, also called a cylinder in the world of math. Okay, 3D. It's got a top that's round, the bottom that is congruent and parallel to the top, and a lateral face. What is a lateral face, you might ask? Well, let's open it up and see. You just saw the three elements of a cylinder when it comes to surface area. We've got the two bases, top and bottom, and we've got a lateral face. All right. The base, some of the elements of the base are the diameter, which is all the way across a circle through the center point, the radius, which is halfway across the circle through the center point, going toward the edge, and the circumference. You notice I have the circumference defined on the lateral face here, because the circumference is the distance across the lateral face, which then becomes, as you can see when we roll it up, when you roll up the lateral face, it's the same as the circumference of the base. Okay, So we're going to define the circumference running along this rectangle, the top of the lateral face, realizing that it's the same measurement as the outside of the circle of the base. All right, here's some other things going on. On the lateral face, we've got the height. We need the height and the circumference to get the area of this rectangle. We also need the height to get the volume. Volume we find by taking the area of either one of the bases, since they are congruent, and then we multiply by the height. So here's the shortened formula. I have a uh, subscript B there to indicate the base. Area of the base times the height. And then for surface area, we're simply going to calculate the area of the base. We're going to add it a second time. We don't need to calculate it a second time because it's congruent. And we're going to add that to the lateral face area. We put those three things together, and we've got the total surface area of the can or the cylinder. Okay. Take a look at that. It's got all the information we need, all the formulas all the variables, all the abbreviations. Down at the bottom on the second face, I threw in the, uh, on the second base, threw in the area formula, that's r squared times pi. Two great mega math songs you should download to help you study this are of course volume, the volume song, and r squared times pi. Yes, that's the title of a song, it's so good. You should check them both out, they'll help you study this material. <clears throat> <clears throat> Next, we're going to do a couple of practice problems, all right? Here's the first couple of them. I'm going to ask you to draw the net. The net is a two-dimensional representation of a 3D figure, so the net. Then, using the net, you're going to find the surface area and volume of both of these cylinders. <clears throat> If you need to rewind or go back to uh, the sweet cylinder soda to find the information you need to help you with this, please do so. All right, so there's the first one, and I'm going to get them both on the screen for you. Then what I'd like you to do, copy them onto your own paper, pause the video, do your calculations, and then resume the video and I will work through these step-by-step step with you. Sound good? All right. Get to work. See you in a few minutes. Welcome back. All right. I'm going to do the work in red pen here, just to reduce your fear of red. Red's not always a bad thing. It's just a color. All right. Here we go. First step, draw the net. <clears throat> The net for a cylinder consists of drawing the base, draw the rectangle, and draw another base. Three pieces, just like our original 
net of the sweet cylinder soda. Okay? It doesn't need to be pretty. It doesn't need to be perfect. It just needs to have these three things going on. I'm going to label it. <clears throat> Excuse me. We've got the uh, radius, 3 meters. We've got the height, 18. Okay, I realize that looks out of proportion on my picture, but once again, the, uh, the scale factor is not important here. It's the labeling that we want and understanding that the 18 is the height and the 3 is the radius. All right, step one. Since we have the radius, let's find the area of each one of these bases. Okay, so we're going to use r squared times pi equals the area. Our radius is 3, so we're going to square that. We're going to use the common estimate of 3.14 for pi. 9 times 3.14, and we end up with, when I round off, 28.3 is the area of the base. Let's keep that handy. We're going to need it in a minute. Looks like we need the circumference. Once we have the circumference, we can figure out the area of the lateral face. Okay, so the circumference is 2 times the radius times pi. Why 2 times the radius? Because it's really 2 times the diameter. <clears throat> and we need 2 of the radiuses, or 2 radii, to get the diameter. So here we go. 2 times the radius times the common estimate of pi is 6 times 3.14 and we get 18.84 I'm going to label that on the net and I'm going to do the work for this problem we're going to take the circumference times the height and we get 339 Point one is the area there, <clears throat> and the area down here, because the top and bottom, the two bases are congruent. So we have all of those numbers. Let's go ahead and uh, get the surface area, since we have everything we need. Surface area equals area of the base plus area of the base plus area of the lateral face. It's us 395.7 square meters. Why the little two? It's a two-dimensional. It's a flat version of a three-dimensional object. So there's our surface area. Let's get the volume. If you recall, volume equals area of the base times the height. Here's the area of the base right here. We saved it for later. And later is now times the height and we get 509 cubic meters is what you say when you see the little three there cubic means this we're talking about a three-dimensional object now there are three measurements to get the area of the base we had two measurements and then there's the third one the height it's a three-dimensional object there we have all the answers we drew the net we got the surface area, we got the volume. Let's go to the next one. <clears throat> All right, same idea. Hey, wait a minute, your net looks just like the first one. Well, sure it does. That's all right. Like I said on the first one, it doesn't really matter what your net looks like as long as it has the three elements that is two bases and a lateral face this time we have the diameter let's go ahead and do a diameter times pi to get the circumference okay it doesn't matter what order you do this work in here's an announcement all right first of all the sixth grade teachers will be meeting in the media center with me and the wealth of an EBS meeting in Terry O'Malley's room, room one. Carol or I will see you there. Luckily, I don't have to go to either one of those meetings. We can keep working. 
So we found the circumference by doing diameter times the common estimate of pi. We're going to find the area of this lateral face now. 15.7, the circumference times the height. And we get 78.5. Let's go ahead and uh, when we cut the diameter in half, we get the radius. So we know the radius will be 2 and a half, right? because that is half of 5. <clears throat> and the area here is r squared times pi, so we're going to go 2 and a half squared multiplied by the common estimate of pi, which is going to get us just a little bit under 20. I'm going to write that in there. I'm also going to label it up here. A common mistake to make on a surface area problem like this is to forget to add both bases. Some people will uh, just add the one base and then they'll end up, in this case, you would end up 19.6 short of the correct answer. Let's do surface area. We have base number one, base number two, and lateral face. Got the three things and our total square centimeters, the little two. That's our surface area. Woo! Volume. Let's do it. Area of the base times the height. We've got the area of the base right there. We've got the height, five. Multiply them. What do you get? Exactly 98 cubic centimeters. Nice. Hope our work matches. Let's do a couple more problems, all right? Say goodbye to these two. Say hello to these two. On these, I'm giving you the net, saving you the trouble of having to draw it. Sometimes in these problems on tests and other things, you'll uh, be given the net. Sometimes you'll be told to draw the net, so it's important to have experience with both. Go ahead and pause the video, copy these problems down, and when you return, we'll do the work again, then we'll be done. See you in a few. Welcome back. Here we are. I'll work a little more quickly this time. Okay. Let's find the area up here. R squared times pi. R is the radius. 3.14, common estimate of pi. There's the area of that base. I'm going to label this one also. Now we need the circumference. If the radius is 5, the diameter is 10. That's a nice easy one. Circumference is 31.4. I'm going to label it. Making the connection between the edge of the rectangle, the edge of the lateral face, and the circumference of the base. Now we can do the area here. That's the area of the lateral face. I've got the three things I need to finish the surface area. I've got the top, the bottom, both known as the bases. They're congruent, as I've said many times. And we've got the lateral face. Let's add them up. And then we'll find the volume. All we need to do the volume is the area of the lateral or the area of the base times the height. So let's do those two things and move on to the next problem. 78.5, 78.5, and 376. I'm not actually adding them old school style like this. I just uh, ran out of space on the side of the page. There we go. There's the surface area, 533.8 square centimeters. And we've got room right here to do the volume. Area of the base times height. There's the area of the base. There's the height. This will have a little baby three when we're done for the units because this is talking about a three-dimensional object. 
942. Hopefully our work matches. And if you made any mistakes, hopefully you understand what you did and you'll be able to fix them next time. I'm going to draw a nice black line here to separate our work and hopefully avoid confusion. This is officially the longest video ever by me, so I hope you're still awake. We have one more problem to do. Then you can take a nap. Okay. First of all, this time we're not given the radius or the diameter. We need to know how to find it. So since we know circumference equals pi times the diameter, and we need to find the diameter, we can change this equation by getting rid of the coefficient, and now we have a new equation. It's an equation for finding the diameter when given the circumference, which is 35 divided by the common estimate of pi. There's the diameter. We need to find the radius, which we do. We're going to divide by 2 to get the radius, which is right there. I'm going to go ahead and label it. Once you do the work, it's important to know where to label the item. There's our height. Let's go ahead and find the area of this lateral face since we have these two numbers here. Okay. 280 square inches. Now that we have the radius up here, let's go ahead and find the area of the base. R squared times the common estimate of pi. Ninety-six point seven. We're going to label both of those. Now we have what we need for the surface area. We've got base number one, base number two, lateral face. Four seventy-three point four square inches, depending on how you're rounding. I don't care so much about the rounding if you're checking your work. We don't care if the answer is uh, so-called wrong compared to mine. But what I do care about is that you got the process right and you see the connections between circumference and diameter, bases and faces, all right? If you're off by two-tenths or something, no big deal. We want the process here. Finally, volume, area of the base times the height. There's the area of the base. We've got the height is 8. And that's going to finish this one off. Thanks for watching. 773 cubic inches. That's all I have for you today. Hope you had as much fun as I did. And I'll see you in class or at the grocery store. Talk to you later. Bye.